That's the O'Sullivan, folks. Well, as Tony says, it is an honour to be invited to come and speak to people, like-minded people, like the wonderful people here, and you get them up and down the country. Um, now, Tim's asked me to speak about uh, elections. All right. Now, seeing as I've never actually won one, I'm wondering if I'm the right person <laughs> to actually speaking be speaking to you about that. Uh, but what we have had recently in Manchester, which is uh, where I sit, uh, we've had two very interesting um, electoral experiences just recently. Uh, we had a parliamentary election for Manchester Central, which uh, I was absolutely honoured to be the candidate for. And in Ardwick, we had a, uh, a local council election due to the death of one of the... Uh, Labour councillors, don't laugh. <laughs> right. Now, we've never really run a parliamentary election by ourselves before. And it was a very interesting experience, particularly in a constituency where we were, which was Manchester Central. Now, if you don't know Manchester much, if I said some of the uh, areas, some of the wards that are there that compose that constituency, wards like Moss Side, Hume, Longsight, Levens Hume. We've got a bit of an uphill task there. It's going to be a bit of a struggle for us because they're very um, enriched areas. They've been a Labour stronghold since, since the Labour Party began. And really, um, we, we, we were expecting the Labour Party to uh, be all over it and win it quite comfortably. And when they did, uh, the... Um, the sum total of all the other parties put together votes didn't even make half of what the Labour Party got. So we weren't expecting any miracles, but what we did want to do was put in a good campaign. And putting in a campaign is always a learning curve. If you learn by your mistakes, we learn a lot, yeah? Now, one thing that we are short of is Resources. We're short of financial resources. We don't get money from trade unions. We don't get money from government. Okay. Time is a resource. And if people work, finding the time to get out on the streets and talk to people and leaflet and canvas and just do the general backroom admin, that's, that's a hard thing to, uh, to resolve as well. So a lot of our campaign had to go around the core people that we had. And I've got to tell you, what a fantastic bunch. Yeah? Nick Griffin gave us a great bit of support there, and he came down and did a, a fundraiser for us. And I, I swear to God, he, he'll tell you, he'll tell you, Tim, that when it comes to election time, he'll tell you, use him ruthlessly. And that's the kind of fella that we've got leading us. He'll go anywhere, anytime, for anyone. And with the amount that he raised and the amount we had in our kitty to start off with in our funds, as a, I must say, if you don't know, um, uh, for a parliamentary election, you get the, the post office are obliged by law to deliver your leaflets for you to every household in the constituency. We had, we'd raised enough money to cover that ourselves, which we didn't really have to ask for anything from the uh, party, which was a bit of a first for us. And. Also, planning is very important. Years ago, when we first really sort of um, started uh, contesting elections, everything came at the last minute. Uh, we, you know you need uh, signatures on forms to support your application for the council, you need 10 for the council, 30 for the parliament. And what we were doing, the deadline would be 12 o'clock on the Friday, and we'd be stumbling at half past 11, having just managed to do it that morning. Well, things have changed there now. Uh, we've got uh, an election supremo, Gary, he's in there somewhere. And he's quite insistent, he's a bit of a slave driver, but one of the things that he brought in, and it works wonderfully well, is as soon as an election's announced, get in there, be the first one in with your forms, be the first one in with your signatures, because it sends a message to the rest of them. Because they're always saying that we're finished, we're destroyed. And yet we keep popping up every time, don't we? We're nowhere near finished and we're nowhere near destroyed. Not even by a country mile. What we've done in Manchester and Salford, 
We've instituted uh, on Tame side now. We've instituted just a, like a routine. Yeah, uh, we have a regular monthly meeting. It's in the same place at the same time, and we don't really care if only two or three people turn up, or if 32 or 33 people turn up, or God forbid, if 132 or 133 people turn up. But that means everybody knows that we're there every month at the same time, at the same place. And it works because we're getting inquiries, we're getting memberships. Um, in fact, when I talk about resources, we're having a bit of trouble getting around all the inquiries, and that is also important as well to increase your vote. Because when you get somebody who joins the party, they may not want to be active, you know, for various reasons, and I know, I'm sure you know what they are. But what they can do is they'll vote for you, they better add to anyway, <laughs> but they've also got a circle of friends and family, and they will spread the word. If you get one new member, I reckon you've got about 10 new votes there. Yeah, and something else that we found out about this election, we were working in some quite, well, very ethnically enriched areas. Uh, Moss side, I think it's something like 60% of the population there are from, originate from other countries. I don't mean Ireland and Scotland and Wales. Yeah, and the uh, Stockport organizer, Sheila Spink, I really do have to give her a mention here because she sat down with a couple of activists one day for about four hours and she went through the electoral register and she looked at the people whose names suggested they probably wouldn't vote for us and she got all the leaflets that were to be delivered and she marked off the streets, she got an elastic band and the streets where the people might vote for us, she just wrote the number of the house on the leaflet. So you, you might have, in a street with 200 houses in, well, in Levensume, there was about five leaflets that we could put through the door. But we know where they were, okay? And then she put them all in bundles with elastic bands around them, and a post-it note with, this is Dixon Street, this is Morrison Street, this is Hibernia Street, this is Hypatia Street. And all we had to do then, and I'll tell you what, it worked, all the way up to the end was park up centrally, whiz off, put them through, because you've got the streets, you're looking at the numbers, put them through them letterboxes, and the response that we got from that was fabulous. Because don't forget, a lot of these people that are living there, they've been swamped, they might have lived there all their lives, they might have been, in some cases, they've been born in that house and they've seen their district and their area change before their very eyes. And they feel powerless to do anything about it. And they were coming up to us and running out. Now, normally when somebody comes chasing after you, you think, no, I... Yeah. But no, no. On these occasions, they were coming up and said, are you really the BNP? I said, well, yeah. They said, come on, you're not really the BNP, are you? Said, yeah. And they grab your hand and they shake it and you couldn't get rid of them. And the stories that we're telling, and it, I, I, I tell you, it really was one of the best campaigns that we've ever run. Interestingly, at the counts, we were looking at the, uh, the votes there. And by the way, elections, very important. Get as many tellers as you can. Now, we've stood in Salford before, and to be honest, you know, we thought they weren't very good, but compared to Manchester, they're a well-oiled machine. Awful. We went to the opening of the postal votes, and the Manchester, you know, they're all council employees that do the counts. They're sat around on a the table there, and the, they've got the ballot papers on the, on the table there. And I swear to God, one of them turned around, she pulls out a top, she says, I've just bought this at Primark, she's showing it to me. Oh, count the ballots. Another one gets a mobile phone out. Now, don't forget, there's open ballot papers in front of her here. She's got a mobile phone out. Well, look, she's on Facebook. Now, not very professional. She's on Facebook. What's she saying? Who's she sending it to? Is she taking a photograph of these? What, what's good? There's people going in and out all the time, unsupervised with their bags. What have they got in the bags? Well, our election supremo, Gary Summersley, thought he'd ask about that. And uh, the response he got is, well, it's hard work for them. They're there all day. 
They need a bit of a break. They need a bit of a rest. And Gary brought up the points. What's she saying on that mobile phone? What's she saying on Facebook? And he went, in the end, he came round to it and he said, put your phones away. <laughs> and the people that are wandering off, getting cups of tea and cups of coffee and coming back with the bags, who knows what's in those bags? He said, leave your bags. If you want a cup of tea, go and get one, but come back straight away. So, the, the slackness of them, you really do have to keep an eye on them. Particularly at the camp as well. One of our people spotted 75, right, they put them in bundles of 25, three bundles of British National Party votes being put in the Labour Party pile. They pulled them up, said, excuse me, you've put, you've put some British National Party votes in the Labour pile there. They said, no, I haven't. And you can't speak to me, you have to speak to the supervisor. Supervisor, over here, get those votes out of there and into our pile now. And now by this time, there's a few more gone on top. So he picked up the first two, said, no, they're all Labour. He said, pick up the next one, pick up the next one. Oh, yeah, yeah, mm, sorry. That is, I mean, I know Nick Griffin recently went to uh, Russia uh, to have a look at the way that they did their elections and he was quite right when he came back that really the democracy and the democratic process here is so flawed, especially when I think really where we were in central Manchester, Labour could have put up a beer mat and put a rosette on it and they would have won. But the key thing, the important thing is that we are making progress. I mean, in that, I came, I think, uh, six out of 12. Even the Conservative lost his deposit, we lost our deposit, 3% of the vote. But it's 3% of the vote. Next time, it could be 5%, next time it could be 15%. And it's like, when you get a feeling the people that came out to us in Longsight and Levenshoe particularly, and Ardwick, who see us really as their only hope. And they're right, because we are their only hope. Because the rest are actually all the same. I refer you back to what Tony was saying before. They're all at it. There's only us that expose them for what they are. And there's only us that, despite everything, manage occasionally to bring them to book. Dennis McShane springs to mind. By the way, did you know that McShane's not his real name? It's, I can't pronounce it, it's, it's loads of M's and Z's and C's and K's all joined up together with the odd consonant in the middle. Um, his family are from, uh, I think, Poland, they're uh, uh, Jews from Poland. But now he's called Mr McShane. So when it comes down to elections, planning, resources, we really do have to make the most of what we've got. And because of the nature of the people that we have in the British National Party, that is how we continually manage to punch well above our weight. And one day, very shortly, the dam's gonna break and we're gonna get in all over the place. And this nation will once again be a wonderful place to live. Thanks for listening. Thank you.